Yeah, so today we are going to begin with the topic of plasmodium life cycle. Okay, so coming to this plasmodium life cycle. So plasmodium, which is a protozoan, it comes under the uh, under the kingdom of protesta. Protesta. Okay, so life can exist in any from right minute microorganism to huge, very huge old trees. So for the survival, organism will be depend on many different sources. So and can feed upon various things also. Here we will we are going to talk about the life cycle of Plasmodium vivax. So if you remember this Plasmodium vivax, so which is a parasite. So which is a parasite, and it also called human pathogen. So Plasmodium vivax, we all know it is a basically a protozoan and uh, we will study how this protozoan begins its life and ends up in different organism. Like uh, we will see how it spreads, what are the necessities of its survival and how it grows, how many stages are there in the life cycle and how it completes its life cycle. We call this as digenic host. So digenetic host because it consists of uh, two hosts. One is mosquito, the two female anaphilus mosquito. Female anaphilus mosquito. And man. So let's see something about this uh, malarial parasite and the disease what it causes is malaria. So what does malaria parasite? So malaria is caused by plasmodium. So plasmodium is basically a parasitic protozoan. Okay. So plasmodium uh, will comes from a family called uh, AP complexon. So which is uh, one of the class of Aconoid decida. So this is the class. This is the family. And this is the class. This parasite is known as plasmodium. It tend to attack the RBC which are red blood cells. And in any mammal like uh, humans, like reptiles, birds, etc., which consists of RBC. So we will talk specifically about malaria as it causes, uh, so as it causes, then the plasmodium uh, is that specific species of this parasite. So which causes the disease named malaria. So the female anaphylus mosquito, when infect or bites, a mammal, then there is an occurrence of malaria. So let us look some of the other species of plasmodium which causes malaria. So there are uh, four other species. First one is plasmodium vivax. Plasmodium vivax. Second one, plasmodium malaria. The next thing is plasmodium ovale and plasmodium falciparum. So plasmodium falciparum is more dangerous out of all the spore, it is most dangerous one. So the life cycle of this parasite is quite complex. So it completes its life cycle using mosquito. So and mainly it uses the mosquito as a carrier. So carry the disease and transmit it as well. So let's begin with the life cycle. So we call the malaria as plasmodium. 
it completes its life cycle in three stages. First thing is, namely the gametocytes. So it is the first stage. And next we get the sporozoids. So it is the second stage. And next we have the merozoids. The third one. It has a very complex life cycle. We are going to study in detail about this complex life cycle. So coming to the very first one, gametocytes. This is the first stage in the life cycle of plasmodium. The female gametophytes, or female gametocytes is called as microgametes. The female we call it as, sorry, male gametocytes we call it as microgametes. And female we call it as macrogametes. macrogametocytes and male we call it as microgametocytes. And they undergo fertilization inside the female anaphylus mosquito. So they undergo female and male. They undergo fertilization in female anophilus mosquito. The mating of gametocytes inside the female anophilus mosquito later will give rise to sporozoids. So it takes around 15 to 18 days for the formation of sporozoid. And the sporozoid is the parasite now. Next, we are going to read up, we are going to start with sporozoids. Sporozoid stage is the second of the life cycle of plasmodium. An anaphylus mosquito, so which infected by the, so now the mosquito, the female anaphylus mosquito will bite the human. So now what will happen? It transmits sporozoids. It transmits the sporozoids. So into the bloodstream. Now the sporozoids will enter into liver cells. And then they grow into schizozoans, schizons. And multiply asexually. They rupture the liver cells in order to release merozoids. So usually, they rupture liver cells and finally it will produce merozoids, so which is the third stage. So now we'll enter into the third stage that is merozoids. So what is this merozoids? Merozoids are from the liver cells. are released into vesicles. From the heart, these merozoids will travel into lungs and settle in the lung capillaries. From liver to lungs, it will go. And next, it will enter into blood. So while traveling in the bloodstream, the merozoids tend to attack the RBC. So blood also mainly RBC. So, and they multiply in the RBC till the cell will be burst, till the RBC burst, multiply.
So when the infected man is bitten by mosquito and then ingestion of gametocytes. So if you see the burst and after bursting, it will produce gametocytes. Now what it will happen? Now this gametocytes will be taken by mosquito. And now they develop into a mature gametes. So the female gametes which will be fertilized and produces oocinity and which will further develop into oocyst. So thousands of active sporocytes develop into the oocyst. Eventually this oocyst will burst and resulting in the traveling of the sporozoids into salivary gland of mosquito. Into salivary gland of mosquito. Okay, when they bite the infected human, And this way the cycle will ref, uh, reflect. Again, uh, the sporozoites will go to liver. From, from liver, it will go to RBC. So, salivary glands. And next, this mosquito will be biting. So, in this way, the cycle will be completing. So though this diagram representing the entire life cycle, so we can easily understand how the parasite will be completes its life cycle. Okay, so the entire life cycle So this way the plasmodium will undergo like uh, division repeatedly. So once again we'll see So we'll see in a very short form. So first thing, we have gametocytes. So this, uh, the person is with malaria. So this is the blood of malarial person, blood of malarial person. So this, the insects will be, the mosquito will be biting. So the person will be having mosquito bite. And after mosquito bite, so this gametocytes will be fertilization in the gut. The gut of mosquito, then it forms into oocinity. So after oocinity, oocyst is formed. In the oocyst, many sporozoids got developed. The sporozoites are will go into salivary gland of from here again the mosquito will bite. And from here it will go to liver. From liver, it will go to RBC. In the RBC, the gametocytes will develop. So in the liver, we call it as schizons. In the RBC, we call it as nerozoids. And so from
here we refer it as we refer this thing as mosquito cycle and in humans so mosquito cycle we call it as ross cycle and this is the life cycle will in humans Okay, remember this is this is mosquito and this is man. Okay, so I hope uh, this is the entire thing. Now we'll go with the next life cycle that is entamoeba histolytica life cycle. So our next topic is regarding entamoeba. histolytica life cycle so this is also a protozoan sarcodina so this is also a protozoan which is amoeboid type and uh, coming to the host this is monogenetic host so man itself is the host for this so endamoeba histolytica are pathogenic amoebas. They are widely to cause the intestinal and extra intestinal infections in human beings. So, and mainly in humans. Endamoeba histolytica will be, uh, comes under the phylum called protozoans. And class, sarcodina. And order, lobosa. And entamoeba histolytica will cause the disease called dysentery. So by invading the mucosa and submucosal layers of large intestine, it usually affects large intestine. So and uh, endamoeba histolytica is found in tropical and subtropical countries. And the life cycle of endamoeba histolytica will be inside single host, that is individual human being. So we'll see the three stages of endamoeba histolytica life cycle. First thing is mature cyst. So first thing is actually contaminated food. So this contaminated food is actually consumed by humans. So this contaminated food consists of mature cyst. Mature cyst. Now we'll go with the cycle. So infection or ingestion of this mature cyst through contaminated fecal through contaminated food and water, and the protection of the wall is mainly by the cyst. Okay, so they can survive for several days, several weeks. They are mainly responsible for transmission. So from here we are going to see existment. So existation, so which is the process, so which cysts transform into trophozoites. 
So this is the feeding stage actually. So the strophozoites will enter into ileum of the small intestine of host. Ileum of the small intestine of host. This process we call it as existation. And from there, they migrate to large intestine. And final stage is strophozoites. How the strophozoites will affect is, the strophozoites are nothing but unicellular parasites. They are like 14 to 18 millimeters in diameter. They multiply in small intestine by binary fusion to produce the cyst via which the stools will get contaminated. So in the large intestine, the strophozoites will produce cyst. Strophozoites. So develops into cyst. So several trophozoites will remain inside the lumen of small intestine. They reach and attaches the intestine and mucosa and enter the bloodstream. And further, uh, they will glow in lungs, liver and brain also. And this cyst will again will get contaminated and it will come out through stools. So, and this will contaminate the food and it consists of mature cyst. And again, it is ingest, inf ingested by the humans. So it leads to existation in ileum and the trophozoites will be come out and the trophozoites will go to ileum from there to large intestine. So in the large intestine, the trophozoites will develop into cyst. And now again, the cyst will come out. This is the life cycle, which is monogenetic, means having only single host, that is man. So entamoeba histolytica invasion in human host vary from zero symptoms to fatal because the person will be asymptomatic in some cases. So this parasite was discovered in the year 1859 by Lambel S. Chowdin. And they showed the he showed the main difference between pathogenic and non-pathogenic forms of amoeba. So this is the pathogenic amoeba. So mainly we have to hygienic elimination of feces, appropriate sanitation, filtration of water, vegetables against the dirt, proper cleaning of hands with soap or hand wash before consuming the food and prepare clean food and also cleaning the surrounding areas of cooking, preventing food materials and drinks from infection of flies, cockroaches, etc. Because Flies and cockroaches will mostly will act as a mechanical uh, vectors. And avoid uh, eating undercooked or raw food. So this is the main uh, things, precautions we have to take to uh, avoid amoebiasis. Amoebiasis, right. So let's see the another life cycle. That is Ukraria Bangkokti. So this also will be formed by the mosquito. And Ukraria Bangkokti will come under Asclehelminthes. So there is one thing very peculiar about this thing about Ukraria Bangkokti. So this is also a digenetic host. So it takes uh, like uh, Ukraria bank of tea, we otherwise call it as filarial worm. And is a, it is a parasitic uh, filarial nematode which comes under Asclehelminthes. helminthes. 
it's one of the three parasite that causes the lymphatic uh, filariasis it causes lymphatic filariasis commonly called elephantiasis an infection of the lymphatic system or by filarial worms because the parasite was been named after uh, otto ukerer and the uh, parasitologist joseph bancroft so that's why the name ukerer ukereria bancrofti both are uh, they have given an extensive work for the study of this filarial infection habitat is usually adult worm you will be seeing in lymphatic vessels especially lymph nodes so it will be blocking the lymphatic uh, vessels and lymph nodes so the microfilariae are found in the peripheral blood occasionally so microfilariae so actually some things will be more uh, in, uh, infective in nature so if you go sporozoites for malaria prophozoites for entamoeba histolytica likewise this microfilaria uh, filarial larva uh, worm is for ukereria bancrofti so let's see the morphology first thing is adult worm we have to know the morphology here so the adult worm will exhibit the sexual dimorphism because in ascla helminthes you can see the sexual dimorphism and you can see sexual dimorphism will be there they are minute long hair and transparent nematodes so they are like uh, filiform in shape they are like this you can see here filiform in shape Uh, with have tapering on both the ends so the head head will be slightly round swelling because it is surrounded by two two rows of small uh, sessile papillae like this the posterior end contains anus that is the terminal end the male measures around 2.5 to 4 cm in length and the tail is actually curved in males and the females are longer than males actually and the tail end will be narrow blunt and pointed the females are oviparous the adult obtain their nourishment from the lymph and lymphatic system only the life span will be of probably like 5 to 10 years that is the life span next coming to microfilaria which is infective so this is the first stage of larva called microfilaria so which is very active in their habit and can move both uh, against the blood stream when sustained they appear as colorless transparent bodies with blunt ends and pointed tails the embryos will be like uh, 290 mm and 6 to 7 mm in breadth when dead they are stained with uh, romanski stain so they show like uh, cuticle will be there because it needs more protection from our body and uh, there is a sac like envelope and nuclei nuclei appear as granules in the central axis of the body and extends from head to tail except the terminal tip 5% of the tail so this is the distinguishing feature of uh, parasite you can see that uh, it will be having like this granules all over the body these granules are nothing but nuclei so these granules are broken into in different places serving the landmarks of the species so you can see the nerve ring like anterior v spot so which is a rudimentary excretory system and uh, we have the posterior v spot which represents the terminal part of anus or cloaca and final larval stage that is l3 stage we have the l3 larva 
This is the infective form of parasite. It is found only in mosquito. So they are elongated, fully formed. So let's see the life cycle. So it has two different hosts. One is uh, dif uh, definite host. And the other one is intermediate host. Intermediate host. So first thing which is definite host is man and intermediate host is mosquito. Culex, Aedes, Anaphilus. So let's see the life cycle. So infection is acquired by mosquito bite. So L3 larva, so is being, so is being injected. Uh, it is not directly injected into the blood. First thing is mosquito bite. So with mosquito bite, the L3 larva will be deposited under the skin. So now, the later they attract the warmth of the skin, the larva enters through the punctured wound or to penetrate through the skin through on their own. So the L3 larva will reach us the lymphatic channels. And settle down at some spots such as inguinal, scrotal and abdomen. They metamorphosis and become sexually mature. The male fertilizes with female and gravid females will discharge. So sexually mature and uh, sexual reproduction will happen. And it produces the microphylaria. So it will appear in the peripheral now, peripheral blood for 8 to 12 months of infection. So it takes peripheral blood for 8 to 12 months. So then these microphylaria circulates into the blood for 6 months to 2 years and then die if they are not taken by mosquito. So the microphylaria ingested by the mosquito lose their sheet and within two to six hours, they arrival in the stomach. So then what happens is that they, they penetrate. So afterwards, when the peripheral it will be available, it needs a mosquito bite. So in the mosquito, it will penetrate the gut wall and move to the thoracic muscle. There they rest and begin to grow. On the second day, the microphile area will become thick, shortened and sausage shaped. So, and call a spiky tail. So, there it comes into L1 larva. So, in the mosquito, gut wall, it will develop into L1 larva. So, the larva forces the rudimentary digestive system. After three to seven days of time, the larva grow rapidly and mouths one or twice. So, this is the second uh, larval stage. After mouthing, it leads to L3. Sorry, L2 stage. L1 to L2. So metamorphosis will complete for uh, 10 to 11 days. And such tail atrophies to uh, stump of digestive system. And now from here, the L2 to L3 stage will be developed. This L3 is infective, which enter through the proboscis sheet of the mosquito about the 14th day. And the mosquito bite the man during the blood meal. L3 larva is released from the tip of the proboscis of mosquito and next the life cycle will repeat. So the development in mosquito will take place 10 to 20 days. So it means 10 to 20 days. So actually the Eucuraria bancrofti is largely confined to tropics and subtropics. 
they are found in india west indies and china japan pacific the disease was endemic to 18 83 countries actually the microfilaria of uh, shows the nocturnal periodicity so actually nocturnal periodicity this is very interesting thing for this so they are uh, periodically peripheral blood at night especially at uh, 10 pm to 4 am 4 am this will reach the peripheral blood and wait for the mosquito bite to complete their life cycle so this is about the ukraria branch of the life cycle and next we'll go with uh, ascaris lumbricoides life cycle so this is also a nematode so this will leads to ascariasis so ascaris lumbricoides which is a nematode round worm that resides the parasite in the human human being small intestine so this worm will further prominent sorry they are prominently found in pigs also so these are the larger round worms that will develop out to up to 40 cm long they are surrounded by mouth three lips ascaris roundworms will cause infection we call it as ascariasis it's found in small intestine and this infection has no symptoms but heavy infestation will be will be seen in children can be lead to digestive issues like malnutrition growth stunning growth stunting so so let's learn the life cycle so ascaris will comes under the phylum aslehelminthes they are commonly called round worms they are bilaterally symmetrical and is having pseudocoelom the sexes are separate they show sexual dimorphism so female ascaris are larger and longer than the males the elementary canal is very well developed with muscular pharynx so the waste products will be excreted through excretory pore so let's see the worms here is the male part here we have the mouth and here we have excretory pore and this is the lateral line we have the cloacal aperture penal setae is seen in males penal setae and we have the curved tail and to show the sexual dimorphism i'm changing the color and we have the mouth and here we have the excretory pore excretory pore we have the female genital aperture genital aperture 
and we have as usual lateral line lateral line is present and here we have the anus for males we have cloaca and females we have the anus and here is the part of tail so let's see the life cycle The adult Ascaris worm lives inside the wall of small intestine in human beings. So we have the first uh, adult Ascaris. So which is present inside the small intestine. Small intestine of man. The female will grow up to 35 centimeters in length and approximately it will lay 20,000 eggs and passed into human stools. So, so the females will lay egg. Females will lay eggs and that will be passed through stools. And the unfertilized eggs are ingested but are not infective. The fertilized eggs, so in this tool, we get two types of eggs. One is uh, unfertilized and other one is fertilized. So here the fertilized are more in infective. So they further undergo the stages. So the fertilized eggs will grow into larva. The larva is become infective after 17 days, after 18 days. And depending on the environmental condition like warmth, moist and soil region, after ingestion, the fertilized eggs will hatch. And larva emerge and invade the intestinal mucosa. It will go to intestinal mucosa. From there, it will be transported to lungs. And then they make way to the troth and return back to the intestine as it reaches the maturity. So now it reaches the small intestine. So the adult worm, now it will lay the large eggs. And around two to three months is necessary for ingestion to infect eggs. So by female adult worm. So this can live up to for one to two years. The human beings are infected by these worms when they consume food and water, which is contaminated by Ascaris. Then human beings as swines are primary host for Ascaris. Other common hosts are monkeys and dogs. So in today's topic, we have seen regarding the four life cycle, two protozoans and two nematodes. Two protozoans are plasmodium. Entamoeba. Eukaryota. Ascaris. So plasmodium will be caused by plasmodium will cause us uh, malaria. Entamoeba dysentery. Eukaryota filariasis. Ascaris ascariasis. So this mainly infect the liver and RBC. This large intestine. This lymphatic glands and lymphatic vessels, lymphatics. And this small intestine. So this consists of uh, mosquito. Man. Entamoeba histolytica is man. 
And this is also mosquito and man. And this is man. That's it. So these are the life cycle we so far covered in this topic. So if you have any doubts, just pin me in the comment box. Thank you.